Okay, and Shazam. Oh, the camera's still all janked. <laughs> we got this, everybody. We'll get this. Yeah! Welcome to my stream. I'm the cartographer, and we're just like, we're feeling all right today. We're feeling good. Let's get our volumes right. There we go. Hello, everybody. Who do we have? We have some people in Kick. We have some people on Twitch. Oh, I should do this more often. There we go. All right. Wait for our Twitch friends to come back from their advertisements. You fortunate souls over there on kick don't have to deal with the ads yet. Not yet. But I'll add to your ass the second I can because I'm broke. Um, oh, looks like we got another we got, uh, kick's getting fly over there. Hello, everybody. Everybody's doing well. And... Very nice. And everybody has made it. Everyone has made it to their seats. Welcome. I'm the cartographer. And this is Maps by me. Um, we're going to be getting back into our Mike's World build. Uh, you know, I've been able to kind of take, take the hammer to it, you know, here and there through the week so even though I haven't been streaming all the content uh, most of the content of the map has been here on uh, 
Twitch for you to see. If you'd uh, like to see any of my past streams where I kind of started on this build, you can check out all of my um, my videos on YouTube, most of my VODs on Twitch. Um, they normally only last like seven days, I think the timer is. Uh, do, do. Let's get my cast right, bring you over to uh, what I'm building here. Game capture. There we go. Move that. Okay. There we are. Rock and roll, baby. Okay, so. We are working on Mike's world. Right now we have to kind of do some trees and some swamping. Um, so let's just do some trees to warm up, I think. We can take a look at it from the side angle. Now you have to remember with this map, not everything is supposed to be... Um, this is not a 3D perspective map. This is firmly a two-dimensional map. So none of these side angles will actually be viewed. But I think it's nice for perspective to kind of just look at everything from a a different view um it's a really good feeling i don't know it's it's almost just feels nice but enough enough viewing enough enough silly nonsense here let's get our stream manager up so i can see what you're chatting uh now i uh, i can only really have one manager up at a time so i choose to have uh my twitch manager up um, so forgive me if I don't see any of your comments, uh, so quick, my friends over there on kick, but, uh, I will get to your, your comments and questions eventually. Um, bear with me as the stream setup is, is, is rapidly growing. Um, but there's still some things I gotta do. So it's real quick. I'm just going to touch this water here because it's bothering me. You know, there you go. That's it. Um, okay, so trees. So I already kind of have the forest denoted softly. Let's... I got my small trees. Let's get some big trees. Do, 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 do. One thing I do appreciate about holding shift when you, when you want to do these rapid uh, clicks um, is... I wonder if the forest actually goes up here. I'll have to check that. Um, is if you notice, like the the tree kind of rotates a little bit every time. So at least at the very least, you're not placing the exact same asset. It's it it, it changes its shape a little bit. Okay, let's, um, just cuz, for the sake of cut, just cuz. Overlay! There we are, and this is a great way to look at the map, too. In a macro fashion, this is really how the map is intended to be seen. Um, the lighting, I might play with the lighting a little bit. We'll see. We'll see what's what. <laughs> I might even give my uh, my customer multiple lighting files just uh, because they're awesome. Um, possibly frame, too, could be a viable option, too. As it's kind of just like a singular map. Uh, but let's get our trace overlay up. Okay. Okay, so that was, they are separate for us. Good. I'm glad I looked. Okay, I do have a small hill there. Hmm. 
just adding some girth to the line that I had made. And I don't want to keep it all small trees, so I'll come in and add some bush, I think, and kind of just like add, add some feature to it. Um, don't want to make it... We can take some of these to lower elevation. So it's definitely high time we work some of these in here. And ignore the other ones. And I'm just kind of going back. I like to make the edge with one tree. And then I'll come back and take my different colors and variate the edge. So that way at least like I have a firm line to work off of. And honestly, it's a lot easier to work on the inside without the um, the trace overlay. So I'm going to strive to turn this off in a little bit too. Make sure to get a cluster every now and then. Do do do. Our little patterns we like to make. Uh, okay. Um, zoom in. So when we zoom in, we do this because in, in Dungeon Alchemist we're in a 3D render program, right? So when the computer sees something, it's trying to render that. It's trying to produce that for you. Um, that takes power. That takes processing power it takes your graphics unit power um, so when we zoom in we minimize that right we minimize the workload that the computer is telling itself to make so that when it switches to a different program inside of its own program it just kind of like sets it up for success you're, you're doing your computer a favor so you'll you'll crash less you'll um, process faster things will like will be better for you generally Just filling trees in, filling trees in. More trees. And a little space is okay because I want to. I'm gonna bring in some mushrooms, I think, for the forest. Maybe some ferns and mushrooms down here. Trying to make sure everything has mostly its own space. Like, it's okay to smush things here and there. As the trees would be stacked up on top of each other in some regard, but... <laughs> I just don't want to do it too much. 
Uh, try to put smaller trees in these little nooks and crannies and definitely like on the edge. That should be a green tree. Clean those up. Boom, bada bing, like it looks good, it looks great. We'll make it look better. Now let's go to my forest palette over here. Do I have any bushes on it yet? Yes. Uh, I want the other fern. We'll do the light fern. Yeah, this one. add some some definition to it i feel like this is these are pixels that really will only be appreciated if the players or the dm decides to zoom the lens in on the map which you've already kind of discussed they will in some regard um i'm gonna try and sneak in a few little like easter eggs for the players to suss out if they want to like kind of zoom in and play around on the map so i think there's just like things that will be appreciated you know, and you can they 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 still should turn up. It's just it's the little things, my my dudes. It really always is. Paint, uh, paint, uh, paint, uh. Okay, swap time. Let's start up here, I guess. go don't like it kind of like that though too much I have to leave it like that fine um bam boom bop let's get some swamp swamp card just bring it over so this is a little trick that I kind of realized was a, a fun thing to do. Oh, because it comes in extra large. Um, so essentially what uh, you do is you take the items that you want to use for uh, either a certain room, a, um, 
a certain uh, style, a section of your map, if you will, uh, whatever, however you want to use it, really. Um, and essentially, you just you know throw that all onto one abstract. And then, of course, if you want to have different sizes, um, and you want everything, so like say you're doing a cave, and you want you have a whole collection of mushrooms that you want to do for this cave, and you want some of those to be a different color, or sorry, not different color, a color actually too. A color could work, uh, size, um, a certain animation, or a certain something that you want on an item, right? And throw it all onto an abstract, and you kind of get this little like paint palette almost, because it'll stay on the on the palette. And not only that, but I can do this, and I can change and modify the size of all these items um, at once. Um, and then if we were to use like the Control C, Control V properties, and drag and paste, so that you have all the things, items, and stuff you need there, essentially. Um, which uh, I thought it was an, a neat way to kind of introduce this concept of, you know, palettes, because, you know, the asset pages get pretty inundated and you end up just kind of auto searching everything, which can take some time on your build. And it's just like an easy shortcut that you can almost integrate seamlessly into your, your work. <laughs> I'm trying to bunk that up a bit. Just give it some some life and some some death, some, some a mixture of the two. Let's come in. Let's get some paint on it. Too big a brush. Too potent. Hey, what's going on, Jambit? Uh, the Daggerford Saga has taken a break as a, as we speak, um, because I'm uh, I'm working again. Nice, awesome. Well, it's good good that we can work. We're working together almost. Uh, what you see here, so I'm, I'm making a maps. I'm a, I'm a, a cartographer. I make fantasy maps for uh, people's games and uh, sometimes uh, character art or emojis. To, I'm kind of a little, little sporadic. I kind of do a whole bunch of different stuff. But map making is where I found my biggest stride. Um, and it's the one I, I seem to enjoy the most. Oh, I mean, it's definitely a, a new career. I'm not bringing in anything really of worth or no, but it's a beginning, you know, so uh, I really, I think the crux with this type of, you know, self-employment is the same as any self-employment is finding jobs, gigs, and, you know, enough people to say, hey, uh, we'll pay you enough money throughout the week or month for you to, you know, actually have 
you know have some substance <laughs> to your life right um so in that regard i'm working on it we're building up to that um I think uh, if I get smart about my Patreon channel and get, you know, people interested in my product and a macro standpoint where I have a lot of subscribers and from those subscribers I can source some, some subs. Um, thank you. Um, it's, it's a large scale map, but I think with anything, that's like kind of what I pride myself on is... You know the 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 beauty is in the details um often on my maps or like just in general you'll look at a map and you'll see something that'll look very hollow like the shelves won't have anything in there or um uh, there's no like sign on the front step or like just like little features that we're used to in life that would probably exist but like the designer didn't take didn't take the time to put them in and i feel like enough of those little details is like really where you get you start popping off and people are like wow this looks so real it looks so so accurate so like for example i'm trying to shove most of this plant life near the nice water away from the swampy water so it kind of like focuses and stuff yeah this is dungeon alchemist and just a little like a big zoom out so you can see the map So this is what I'm working on here is um, uh, a, a Dungeon Master uh, is playing Mike's World. Um, and uh, Mike's World is like an old AD&D format game of like a wilderness adventure. Um, and essentially the only road on the map is the one you see here. And conveniently enough it leads to a bunch of uh, caves that are all filled with monsters. Um, <laughs> But apart from that, the entire map is just scenery. It's just trees and rivers and mountains and stuff. So we thought it was very, you know, plausible to turn this into an actual map with, with great detail and, and, and color. And uh, DA is doing an awfully good job. I just the only thing I really have to do is just like take everything and scale it down to its tiniest size. We can go even smaller with some of this stuff if I want. But I think I found a happy scale that I think fits well. Um, Let's see, what else do we need in the swamp? Some lily pads of varying sizes. Um, so I like to, like, one thing I like to do, like, you'll see pretty frequently in my swamps, is, like, I like to, like, cluster some plant life. Um, I put one. I did put one. Um, so, I don't like that line. Make this a, a triangle. Shapes. Sometimes lines are okay. Um, so here on this island, I was like making my map, and the person that I commissioned this for was actually watching the stream. Um, which, if you do commission work, streaming it and having your customers watch and talk to you while you build it is really helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was they were like, oh, like this island that you're that you're doing right here, like there's some orcs and goblins that kind of inhabit it, and there's a weird fruit that grows on this island. Um, and they 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 turn into to, they ferment it and they get drunk. So I was like, oh, is it cool if I put a little campfire and a couple barrels here? And it's like super small and insignificant, but they were like, yeah, totally. Like if the players are looking around and they're like, hey, dude, what's this tent doing here? You know, I think I actually might make the tent black. Yeah, it looks much better. Um, you know, so that's a, a little Easter egg that the DM knew of that exists out in the wilderness. So I would imagine there would be maybe some like strewn about campsites or like maybe some stuff but i personally don't really know and i haven't been instructed really to do any of that so i wouldn't know where to begin um so where i can and if i can i'll try to throw a little easter egg in or a little something get big lilies little lilies Okay, Swampville. I will zoom in. We'll get our overlay back just to double check our swamps. Hey, what's up, Lo? Good morning, my friend. 
Uh, if you look on uh, Dungeon Alchemist self-promote, there's a Russian dude who's using Dungeon Alchemist, kind of how I intend to use Dungeon Alchemist as a uh, as a VTT, like a VTT light. Um, as long as your scenes aren't really big, and you're like, I feel like if you're not telling your computer to have this huge map, <laughs> and it's something you know reasonable, like 60 by 60 or less, um, I think. It's viable as, as like an efficient way to do a VTT light for your players. Yeah, it doesn't look pretty neat. Um, and like, so that's how I intend to use DA, but I intend to use the modules that you, or the, the models that you've been painting from M2540. Or whatever. I, I always forget the numbers. Um, but yeah, so essentially drop in your PCs and drop in your 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 models in that in a room in, that you've made in DA and just use du the Dungeon Alchemist lens that we're looking at right now as as your camera, you know? Just stream it through Discord for your players. You can call me Care Jambit. I am the cartographer. Another guy that shows things. Yeah, and then you could you could also switch to the first person view, a player view, if you wanted. So you could do like a walkthrough of a cavern, um, you know. Uh, and I feel like that's one of those situations where, if you're doing detailed enough maps and and prompting certain things that you need, you can give a brief description, and then you can omit a lot of the stupid questions that your players tend to ask. Like, when you describe everything that they see in a room, and then they're like, well, what else do I see? And you're like, I described everything. You don't have to have that conversation when you describe everything on the screen, and then you let them look at the screen. You know, you just, you see it. The secret door is there. You just have to click on it, you know? Like, tell me where to click. So I think, like, it's it's always, like, formatting and, like, how you want to set things up. It's it's, it's optional and can be fluid in, in, in a sense. But, yeah, so Gabo, this is essentially what, I, I, what I've been doing um, in Jambit, uh, if you're in, interested. So essentially, this is the map that I work off of, and I throw it down over my, my map, and I work underneath it. I focus on uh, topography, like the, the, the shape of the land first, and then I do water features, and then I come in with like the details afterwards, like the grass and the... In the the trees so that's all swamp that's all swamp um, okay I think my, my swamping is actually fairly accurate so let's we continue thank you so I mean if you see um, let me go back to yeah here so you can see, you can kind of see the 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 outline of what's underneath Oh my gosh, dude. Just, just throw a random one. For some reason, my stream manager does not tell me when my ads come up. My stream manager on my URL browser tells me. I got I got the uh, the relaxing tavern tavern music. Mmm. <laughs> Mm, all right, welcome back, everybody. Um, I wish I I wish I could pick which type of ads I get low, so I could get like like all like the, like the better home and garden stuff and like you know, <laughs> like <laughs> the peaceful tranquil commercials, please. I don't need somebody punching through a wall being like, bam, Mike's energy drink. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoa, thanks for the gifts, Gabo.
Music gentlemen, welcome! What a great way to be welcome to the community. Um, we're making maps over here today. We do a lot of things. We do a lot of fantasy-based stuff over here. I, I I was laughing and telling the lore master before I got on stream. I was like, the 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 tavern music just gets me hyped up. Um, it gets me excited. I want to make maps. I want to role play and like do character voices. Um, if I was a healthier person, I'd do cosplay and get dressed up in chain mails and all sorts of stuff, but it's a lot of work for me to get dressed in regular clothes, so. Um, yeah, so I just, I'm leaving it up here so you guys can all kind of just look at, you know, what the big picture of this map is supposed to be. Um, just YouTube, just copyright free tavern music and just, I make sure to try to switch it up. There's at least 20, 30 different options, um, two, three hour options. Uh, yeah, so I think it's important for me as, as the map maker to keep, keep this in the back of my brain, but you see me working zoomed in an awful lot. And what that does is it kind of just helps me stay away from analysis paralysis, um, as the map's really big. And if you, you seeing everything, then it's, it can be tough. Um, so it's just the way I like to do things. Um... I do a Patreon uh, and a PayPal is normally my, my two preferred formats. Whatever is easier for the customer. Um, this map is in, I think, 20 foot scale. It, the, the map is depicted in 10 foot, but I think I had to double it to make everything fit. And so it wasn't an obnoxious amount of work. Um, so I believe every tile should be about 20 feet by 20 feet. So it's, it's honestly, it's a fairly small world map in it's in the sense of things, in the sense of like a player, um, but an awful lot to explore out there. But <laughs> let's get back to our swamping. Swamping's fun because swamping I get to do like random detail stuff. Oh, actually I want to, I like overlay off when I swamp. Yeah, so it's essentially, it's like a large countryside. It's like one large region. Um, for perspective, uh, I mean, I guess actually it's got to be bigger than that. I should double check my scale. Because this would have to be much bigger. I'll have to double check my scale. Because this is like a little castle that I've created. And if that's a castle, that at least has to be like 200 feet long and wide. It can be a small keep. It doesn't have to be anything big. Twenty-five, Or maybe I have to come back and maybe just double this in size. Which I would also be okay doing. I would get to put a little bit more detail on it. Um, so, thanks for bringing that up. I will double check my scale. I did all this, like, in the beginning. When I started the map. I promise. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's get my swamp palette. Shoop, shoop, shoop. And worm trail, worm trail, worm trail, swamp. There we go. Let's hit it with a little smoothie. I just like the shapes. The, the shapes vary a bit when you do hit it with a smoothie. So, like, as opposed to all these little, the, the brush size always being the same, I can kind of just give some variation on some of these, these holes. I don't like that. Yeah, 100% Jambit. And I think that's definitely, like, the, the person that is contracting me for this job will, like, impress that upon. They're like, yeah, like, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Um, it just needs to look good, right? It just needs to have, and I said this on yesterday's stream, like the goal for me 
my goal in, in mind is like I want to be 90% effective. I want this to be 90% accurate to what it's actually supposed to be. And the other 10% can be me being off on scale a little bit or me adding a little fluff and, and a little of my own variation to to make things look better or to make things easier. For example, where is it? This river. So this river is supposed to look way more windy, but I can't make it look way more windy unless I spend a shit ton of time on it. So like, I'm not going to. And I feel like the, like those are the de design decisions that you have to make. Like it's like it's like your customer doesn't want to pay for that. <laughs> like they they don't want to wait for that, and they don't want to have to pay for that. You know, so don't make them. And it's okay. Like not, not everything has to be perfect. You can be perfect on your own little private maps that you spend way too much time on and put way too many assets on. That, that you make for the campaigns that you're playing in. <laughs> yeah, it's totally, totally. Gabo just comes in like like the uh, the sub fairy. I I, I assume they're working today. And they're just lurking about the stream like they tend to. Thanks so much, Gabo. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, just trying to get some little grass tufts. I love these are one of my favorite assets to use. Totally, man. Whenever you get around to it. Hello? So yeah, these grab, they just look good. And you can do so much with them. You can put them in water, they look good. Maybe we'll get like a little crazy with it over here. You can put them out of water, it looks good. You can put them in planters. Looks good. You can like I I use the grass tufts so much. <laughs> they really remind me of uh, like Pokemon. You know when you're walking through the high grass and Pokemon. That's what they remind me of, and it's like nostalgic almost. But so here's one of the things I was talking about earlier. One of the features I like to do just with nature is, you know, like, nature tends to be very clustered, in a sense of they all, nature wants the same thing right plants all want the same thing they want light they want water and they want like air soil that's not stagnated and, and and all built up right so in that sense i will tend to like do little clusters like this and like maybe we can even work around this in a sense of like now that we're getting on the edge of this of this swamp maybe a tree has grown and survived um has no place here in my fantasy um but it does in map making it's one of the things like i grow up in in nature i'm from new england so like i as a kid i was always out in the woods making forts pretending and and you know just playing in the woods you know i was a woods kid um so in that regard like I've, I've seen it like and if, if a river doesn't look like a river to me i know it and i'm like that doesn't look like a river dude Nice, nice, nice. Similar, similar uh, stomping grounds, my friend. It really does. It goes a long way. And like, I notice, I'll look at other maps and stuff, and I'll just, I, I'll notice the the difference. And I'm like, you, you know, like if you just put a couple bushes, like just on that edge, you know, I'm like, and like my, my little like ADD brain starts going crazy, or I'm like, oh, you. That wouldn't look like that, you know? Like, what's one of the things I, uh, I'm, I'm super strict on? Like, I won't do it for this map because we're our perspective is way up here. Um, but, like, when you zoom in on our river, if you have a basic scale, um, having grass underneath normally isn't the best. Dirt can be really good. Rock is best. 
um, a mixture of rock and dirt is the best. But you see, like, over here, how, like, it just looks empty. If I was doing a regular build, like, this, this river would be, like, boom, bang, grass tufts in here. Oh, this edge would be, would be littered with stuff. Inside the river... We'd scour it with some rocks. You know, like, we'd build it up. We'd add some life to it. And, like, already you can see, like, look at the difference in, like, wow, <laughs> Like, if you've ever, and, like, I just, like, I've been, I've been at the, the, the waterfall. You know, I used to drink beers and just hang out and, 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 and uh, chill on summer days, jumping off a giant rock cliff in a river. You know, like, I've, I've seen it all. Nice, super cool. Oh yeah, yeah, our trees are so tiny. It's all it's all new forest. Da -do -do -dum -dum. All right, where am I? I am swamping. Just in general, I think it, the difference between, like, east and west is, is staggering just in, like, scale and size. Like, we like what we think is big over here, and then you go out there and you're like, whoa, it's this far between this town and, you know, this? You're like, there's just so much space out west. It's kind of baffling. Um... Some more bushes... Oh, we're neglecting down here. What's the Brotherhood tree? Dude, Vegas is like a... a, a crime to to nature like literally there is no reason that city should exist everything about everything around in in, in that city you're just like this shouldn't be here this shouldn't exist this is not natural if, if anything goes wrong y'all are screwed <laughs> oh what's going on mac Oh, you know what? Your name is green, so I thought that was Jambit that said that. But yeah, totally, right? Like, Vegas is, is, is like, it's weird. I was out there, like, two, three years ago, um, and it was actually, you want know, to believe it or not, so we went on vacation, and uh, the one time that I've gone to Vegas in my life was the one time it had snowed in Vegas for, like, I think the last time it happened was, like, 50 years ago, almost. So, like, I'm out uh, at a bar with my wife, just, like, having a beer, watching the hockey game. And uh, and the bartender, like, this older lady, like, she had to be, like, 40, 50 or something. She's like, hey, she's like, can you cover for me? She's like, can you, I've just, I, she had never seen snow in her life. And it was the cutest thing. She, like, ran outside. And so then me and my wife, we were like, we're getting a little concerned because there's a weather advisory. We had had a few drinks. We we're like, oh, is, like, the cab service going to be okay? Like, you know. So we go, I go outside to check, and it had literally looked like it rained. I was, like, the ground was wet. And I was like, winter advisory? I'm like, what? <laughs> Brother tree. Is that the one that 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 has the you can drive through it? Is that what that tree or is it a different tree? Uh, I think there's enough stuff in here. Oh, dead dead branches, dead branches.
Yeah, it's actually pretty comical seeing uh, seeing other states deal with a few inches of snow. And like over here, I'm like, if there, unless there's more than like six inches, I'm I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love just every now and then throwing a log in the water. Just looks good. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the big deal. Big deal is just salt. Like, the difference in, in, like, your snow care. And, like, it's also a budget thing. So, like, we deal with it in the sense of, like, we only have so much budget for the year for the salt and, and like plow and treatment but like y'all just don't budget for it because you have no need until like oops the one time in 20 years that's crazy it snowed again maybe maybe it's the global warming Yeah, yeah. You wonder you wanna know why? Because humans aren't supposed to live there. <laughs> it's an inhospitable inha space of land. <laughs> uh okay, the big branches, the big branches. So, so with the logs, they don't give you a random sporadicness, so like I gotta come in here and turn it every now and then. I hate I hate when I'm responsible for the randomness, because it's really hard to be random. Is anybody that's a creator, you're just like turning your random brain on and off, like sometimes it's fun, but like sometimes it's hard to feel sporadic. Yeah, we're, we're, we're like super fragile creatures at the end of the day, okay? But like, I sit here on my porch and I look at the outside and I often am just like, mm, no, <laughs> you win, Mother Nature. You, you take this day. <laughs> uh, I want paintbrush. Through the window most often. <laughs> uh, I used to be a big outdoors person, and not in the sense of, like, I like, you know, hiking and stuff. I just like being outside and doing things and activities outside. Um, so I would tend to. But that's kind of changed, you know, in, in recent years past as I've gotten older and my, my health has <laughs> fallen subject. But um, my new favorite thing to do is on that sentiment that you bring up low is to I my office is actually on the corner of the house uh, so it's rather exposed um, and I can in the summer I can just open both my windows in full and it feels like I'm just like on the computer in my office but I'm outside it's like a sun porch it's very very near and dear so those are some of my favorite times Um, I don't want to do any more because I feel like it's just getting a little over the top. So we're going to come in and trim that down. And this is the Serpent Trail. So remember to just leave this here. Boom. Like it just like swamp, Bill. And you see, I guess these could be, no, I like them as is. Okay, swamp, swamp, swamp. Never done with this section. I'm super proud of how I did this like ice flow. It looks like it's a, like a glacier that's kind of flowing up and out of the water. And also, as you know, if you've used this program, you gotta find a way to cheat the uh, the water next to the ice. So it was actually it was it was way easier than I thought it would be, to be honest. Hey, he's back. Uh, I was just saying, Mac. I really like how this kind of came out. I'm really proud of Da and how these assets are. 
just so easily used in so many different perspectives. Like... But, yeah, as you know, I had to find a creative way to cheat the water next to... Um... Some snow cliffs. Like a cliff made of snow. Yeah, yeah, that could be viable. Maybe further up on the edge as we get closer to the to the edge. Maybe this like the snow blocks would be work with for that. Sandstone rock. Some red? Oh, I didn't know that! Whoa! Boom! Yo, Mac just coming in here and dropping bombs every day of the damn week, baby. You know what? I now need to, like, go back and redo this entire... <laughs> Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just throw a couple pieces on it and call it a day. <laughs> yeah, that is that is that is weird. And this so this sandstone, we'll see which ones do. This one's good. That one's good. I like those ones because the curvature is really nice. Um, these two I found do not. Um, and there's just like, there's like little inconsistencies like that, which are, it's like, it's like a small minor thing. Um, I would love to see, uh, like wood grain. A lot of times like a chair and a desk don't match or like a, a wall and, uh, and a thing, you know, don't, if you could change the, if you could change the wood grains and just have the wood grains be their own palette, you know, you have like an oak, you have a mahogany, you have a this. I think that would be really beneficial for for all of, all the creators. I like these ones. Oh yeah, they're, uh, it's like some randomness. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the idea is we're gonna do like it's like um. Like snow, like a big snow cliff sheet. Like if you look at the side of, uh, like the like those big sheets, of, it's like they're like a big cliff with a plateau, and then underneath it will have some icy waters. <laughs> and, and he's out. <laughs> see ya, see ya, Mac. <laughs> have a good day. I always appreciate it. No, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Hey, what's going on, Stormy? You see, one goes and, and one comes in, right? You're just saving somebody's seat, Mac. That's all. How you doing, Storm? I bring my own seat! One of those uh, foldable lawn chairs. Those camping chairs. You're always prepared. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Hope your dinner was delicious. Um, Mac just like came in and just, uh, the Dungeon Alchemist Fairy. And was like, hey, um, by the way, like Skeletor meme. Hey, by the way, sandstone rocks can be can be painted. If you want to paint them white, they make really good glaciers. Well, anyway, see you later, folks. <laughs> so.
So the plan is is to make some type of uh Yeah, until next time. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think I, I don't like... I, I wasn't liking the snow clumps. I might take, like, something like this, make it smaller, and then drop it in like this. Make my sn snow piles more snow piley. DMB, DB, source books. Um... Doo -doo -doo. Did you post Jambit? Did you post in Home Brewery or in DM Chat? I don't think I ever saw your post. Is it like Dragon Ball Z universe or like Dragon Ball Z themed stuff? Is it D and D stuff? I don't know what your question is. I'm not, I don't. I'm not sure where you posted it, my friend. Or was it a direct message? I might have just I might have just lost it. Yeah, that's uh that's the the guild that I, I, I help mod. I do not claim ownership to it, but I claim partnership. Yeah, like which 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 channel did you post that in? Like I said, was it on like Home Brewery or is it was it on um, DM Chat? No, I am not DM. That is the lore master. They are my good friend and, and colleague. We, we work together in tandem. They do a lot of their own projects. I do a lot of my own projects, but we also often frequently, you know, work together in tandem. Um, ah, thank you. All right, all right, welcome back. Uh, I do, so Jamba, I do see you guys coming back. I do not see you guys going too, which is the issue that I'm finding on my phone stream manager. <laughs> um, so I do appreciate you guys letting me know. Um, and yeah, so awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's see where we are. I don't, so you, where did you, you still got to tell me, Jambit, where you posted it? Because the lore master might have responded to it, as they tend to respond to all the homebrew. It's their favorite thing to do. I was like, I was like, lore master, you love homebrew so much. And they're like, no, I don't. I'm like, bullshit, you don't. <laughs> like, 
half of your your channel is just us talking about homebrew. Um, so if you tell me where it's posted, I know we were ch just chatting about boss deals. It's in the home brewery. Okay. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Custom race. Let's find Jimbetta. I know there's a lot of conversation that just went down there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Wall of text. That's fine, that's fine. I'm getting into uh, my hour-long break here, so... Yeah, you're not, you're not boss deal, are you? You're Jambit. Um, yeah, I, I can't find it. There's a whole bunch of conversation that went down in Home Brewery. I mean, I'm scrolling up again. Yeah, I, that's what I thought you were. I, see, I, I remember when you joined. There we are. I, I, I found you. I found you. Yep, it's the, that's why. I am I am notoriously bad at realizing what threads are. And I'm trying to get better at threads. Um, but I will just completely ignore them forever. <laughs> Somebody made a thread on my, my damn post, and I literally didn't know the thread was there for like a solid hour. I was like, I have a notification, but I don't know what's going on. It looks like somebody replied, but where did they reply to it? I was like, oh, they made a thread on my post. <laughs> um, oh, that's not too much. A lore did respond. See, I told you, like, I can't even respond to stuff fast fast enough because lore is just all over it. Let me save this. I'm gonna boot down for just a bit. I'll read this on my on, as my as I walk away. Um, and, we'll, and we can chat about about it while I'm AFK. <sighs> yeah, it's definitely the vibe. Like, we definitely it's <laughs> it can be a lot at times. Sometimes we're just tired, or um, we've we've already read some stuff. Um, but like, it's definitely something that's just like just needs time time to be processed, right? Like we're we're constantly constantly talking about it. it's kind of just what we do on this channel and and what we do on Lore Masters Guild. So we just talk about our ideas and we we get make better ideas and we help have people tell us, you know, what's too crazy about our idea and help us like rein us in if we're if we're you know getting a little too off mechanic or um and a lot of times like these are the hard questions like these are like, you're sitting there as a creator or a designer a game designer right and you're like oh if only i could have somebody's opinion on this right like if only i could just, like this seems i i think this is a little crazy but if somebody else could tell me it was a little crazy then i would totally agree with myself right um And that's good. I appreciate that about your 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 content too. Um, I love it when content is, is thought out and drawn out. It's okay. It's okay to like to have people help you like figure out some rough details, but I don't like the practice of just like taking a, a half baked idea and spending an hour on it and then just like going around and asking everybody, you know, what they think, right? Like you've hardly even thought about this idea. You're not ready to ask questions. Like let's let's. Let's uh let's put some some effort into our our content, right? I'm not doing any such thing as I lick my thumb and bring it off camera. Not doing anything right now. Um I think honestly, I think I couldn't even get in trouble because of the state that I live in. But I'm also not, uh, I heard that pasta makes a good filter too, like Rotini. <laughs> yeah, there is some state to state stuff, so I think would, would, might, might come into contention there, but here, I'm going to put us up in the office and I'm going to read this. I'll still be here on mic so you can listen. Um, um, there it is. My wasteland. 
Oh, uh, what do you, what do you hack? What do you hackers? You want to know my stuff? You want to know my info? <laughs> I don't know. See, like, I, I don't know how, how cautious I need to be. I don't think it's not you. I just think it's an, it's inherent of just like internet content. Because if I say something here, the VOD will get posted. And then it's there forever, right? I just heard too much, too many horror stories. I'll message you. <laughs> it's like it's a nice day out, but it's not like sunny. But like it's not like rainy, like poo. But it's an, it's like you know, like there's this like light overcast.
<laughs> Stormy. Half the battle is knowing, so I appreciate you sharing sharing the uh, the advice. I honestly wouldn't even know what to do. Wouldn't even know. So I guess this is good. The other half is blown around <laughs> Um, okay, so we gotta check Jambits out. You still there for us, Jambit? Uh, Algerians. Isn't that a place, Algeria? Large dragon or bat-like wings. As a society, they're pretty normal people with the exception that they have wings and can fly. They prefer to build up and close to mountain size. Their houses... Built on solid ground, have their front doors and second floor. This being works with large bang doors. They're like bat people! <laughs> Very much, uh, it seems like they inhabit areas that, you know. Like birds, you know, if you put your birdhouses in the right place, then uh, the birds are attracted to them. Same same kind of concept here. Uh, the wings. Button lace portions. When adventuring away from these towns, most after you sleep in a hammock. And is this is this race cement supposed to be a, a playable race? Let's just write my notes down here. Age, adulthood, 14, 15, lived age 70. Medium, fly 30, count, dex, charisma, Rex. Features. Um, your blood is alive. The storm symbiotic creature. They're called keen. Algerians pancreas spleen liver and kidneys are different from humans as a result the keen using their cardiovascular system as a super highway the heart muscle has been reduced to a simple valveless hub and is much smaller also see since keen consume sugar and give off oxygen lungs in the body have atrophied to the point that they are almost non-existent the front of your abdomen has also evolved bone plates as a result of protecting the liver, stomach, and intestines. Things the keen need to live. See bone plating. You can... Is that a feature? I don't think that's a feature. You can exert your will to supercharge your body by concentrating the keen in a number of ways. Increase metabolism. Due to your unique... Your physique... In symbiosis with Keen, you must consume twice as much food as the average humanoid. You have advantage against poisons, intoxications, and no longer need to breathe. Keen Burn. You can use your Keen to go beyond normal limits and perform inhuman physical feats. For the next minute, you gain advantage on a single attack roll, damage roll, athletics, or acrobatics check. It's a physical saving throw, dex con strength. <laughs> um, you must declare which role is using your keen burn before you make the roll. Um, okay, keen burn once per day, question mark. Um, one, two, teleport. By shutting your keen into your muscles, you can briefly force your body to move faster than the eye and teleport a short distance. Uh, teleport. What distance? You can shunt your keen to the surface to heal yourself or touch a creature. Heal yourself or a creature you touch. The long... The longer you hold over the wound, the more healing is done. The ability has no effect on undead or constructs. Yeah, there's just way too much here. What does is, what is Loremaster say? I really like... Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Cool. They said they'll put some edits for you. Okay, well great. I'm getting I'm getting into the meat and potatoes of your 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 homebrew race here. Um Come on, Jezebel. Go on. Let me shut the window. Not you, Harry. You're not ready. Um <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Jambit. The idea is really freaking cool. I love the concept and the idea of what this character is. Um, I feel like as creators, sometimes we ourselves are trying to divulge so much information that we overshare or put things where they're not supposed to be. Um, I think it's very important for you to decipher between what is general lore. Um, it could fit into D&D &D fine. You just need to figure out what, what you're doing for your mechanics um, and, ba and balance it as such. So you I think you need to figure out what you think is like lore and general information about the race, the culture, and the people and have that be a separate write-up from anything you're doing with the, the PC character. This is a character that's designed to be like a half-elf, an elf, a gnome, a, a dwarf, right? A playable race. Um, so I would keep those things separate as you do not want to impress upon the player what this character looks like or does or is or wears. Um, who's to say I can't be an Algerian that grew up in Baldur's Gate? Who's to say I can't be an Algerian that modifies and chops his wings off? You know, like, you don't want to impress that on your players ever. Leave their agency alone. Um, and it's not to say you can't have this information and it's not important. I think this is just, like, more general lore about the creature and the, their people and their culture. And that's fine. Just denotate that and separate that in two different write-ups. First note. Second note. I agree with Loremaster intensely. I started getting into your features, and you have way, way, way too many things going on here. And I think it's, again, it's like, like I said, with you're trying to fit in narrative and lore-type things with the creature and the write-up and the features all at the same time. Try to really separate those things in your brain. Um, and separate them in your write-up. A great way to do homebrew is to not reinvent the wheel. And uh, this is what Loremaster has taught me. And we call it iteration. Uh, essentially, what you want to do if you're gonna, if you want to create a race for Dungeons & Dragons, Jambit, is you want to go and take Elf, take Gnome, take Halfling. Pick like three. Look at all their features, look at all their abilities and everything that they get. And then try to emulate that with your character. And in most cases, it goes in the sense of a fashion of a creature gets two languages, a creature gets a movement speed, a creature gets um, a plus two and a plus one to something. Nowadays, post Tasha, we don't really put those to a certain AI. We just let them be freebies. Um, and then they'll get like maybe one or two, possibly three, if they're not that powerful, um, features. Like racial features. So like the halflings get lucky. Um, Shadrakai get a misty step, you know, a shadow step, right? Um, so there's things that you're trying to implement on your character or your race that already exist, and that's not to say that your idea is bad. It can be a different idea, but let's try to iterate that. If you want to have, um, where is it? Um, above training. If you want to have teleport. By shunting your keen into your muscles, you can briefly force your body to move faster than the eye and appear to teleport a short distance. Go and take Misty Step. Go and take Shadow Step. Go and take literally what the Shadrakai have, reword it, reflavor it, and make it uh, an Algerian feature. Um, and that's a great way to kind of set up a framework where you can say, hey, I need to have one, two, three, four, five bullet points for this race to fill it up, right? Um, normally with features, you try to keep it around like two, um, unless, you know, like I said, one of them's kind of weak, you know, if it's something that's like, oh, I get like disguise self once a day, um, well then maybe you'd give them a third feature, um, to spice that character up a little bit. But I think it's important to notate that the race is not supposed to be important. It's supposed to be class, subclass, 
then like your race and like all this other things you know then like your profession and then your background right right so the most important thing shouldn't be the race so you want to remind yourself that when you're creating all this content because you don't want to like you don't want to have more things in your race than what your class is going to have especially at level one and especially in, in the same thing at level 20. um yeah i'll do i'll do a brief write-up here for you um, of just some some basic notes for this. Um, the other thing that I would I would I would recommend is put things to mechanic. So you say teleport by shunting your keen into your muscles. You can briefly force your body to move faster than the eye and appear a tel to teleport a short distance. That to me as a player mechanically means nothing. How far can I teleport? How often can I teleport? When can I teleport? Um, what happens when I do teleport? Uh, all these questions that need to be answered, right? A better write-up for that could come in the form of, um, as a bonus action, you can, uh, uh, by utilizing the, the power, the muscles in your keen, your character can teleport up to 30 feet to an empty space once per day. That's what we need to hear when you say you're trying to put a feature down. We need to hear the mechanics. We don't need to hear the shunting of your keen, moving your body, and you appear to move faster than the eye. That's the fluff. That's the narrative. That's good to have in like a a, a lore write up for your character, but for you for the mechanics, we don't we we need to know the meat and potatoes. <laughs> And I think you should just write it as Misty Step. A once a day Misty Step is really powerful as a racial. That's a super powerful racial. You can take a martial character and now they have a Misty Step when they shouldn't. You can take a, a caster with uh, sorcery points and now you can ignore a spell slot for your Misty Step once a day for your get out of jail free card. You know, like it, it's a very powerful ability and, you know, respect it as that. The character is super cool. I think I think you just need to you need to iterate. You need to look at other classes or not other. You need to look at other races. Excuse me, um, and try to emulate that, and then stop there. It looks like you have this training and all these other things you want to do, um, which could be interesting. But I would separate them from the race and maybe make that like a separate play play test or a separate. Um, maybe a class maybe its own its own class a racial prerequisite class you know what i mean where it's like only they can only a, a, an, an algerian can take this class but an algerian doesn't have to take this class um they can choose to train other things other than their body or their their keen possibly Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with a race specific class. I think but I think that's separate. And I think that you should make those separate. Because right now there's just way too much stuff in here for Algerian to even be like usable. Because I don't even know what what to use at this point, right? I don't know what to use because there's too much and I don't know how to use it because we don't have the specifics. Um and I think you have a lot of ideas here, so to maybe help you narrow it down, make a pros and cons list. Or maybe do a, like a tier ranking list and look at all your abilities that you have in mind for this character and say which ones are really powerful, which ones aren't so powerful, which ones are important to the narrative like shape that I see for the character. Um, and then through that list, pick and choose two or three depending on how powerful they are and try to balance them. Again, like you're Algerian, if you want this character to be a D&D &D race, playable race, Algerian should feel just like a half elf. It should feel just like a gnome. It should feel just like playing a human. You know, it should be balanced in that same regard. It shouldn't be like, ooh, I'm going to play Algerian because I get fly speed, teleport, bone plating, uh, super vitae. You know, like, that's not what we want. <laughs> so here, let me edit this message and I'll just do a general write-up. One iterate 
mimic other playable races and try to match. Specify, give numbers and charges to your features. Okay. <laughs> What's you say? Ba balancing creations was honestly the most difficult part for me to grasp when you start homebrewing. Yeah, I think, I think it's uh, as when you're in that space of creativity and you're like, you know, like you have a lot of ideas and you, it's fun and we get excited and we want to have all of our ideas out on the paper and sometimes that you know we put too much sometimes we you know it's hard to reel our, our own brains in because when we're thinking like that we want to add more we want to think more we want to expand our thought um and honestly it's really funny but you know uh, the lore master the first person who commented on your your stuff there jambit um I'm like their little like check fail safe. Like they over over brew so much. They get so crazy sometimes and I'm like I'm like do we need all that? I'm like do we are we getting away from the point lore master, right? And every now and then like everybody I think needs needs to be reminded to kind of and kind of make sure that we're keeping in a sense of balance make sure we're keeping it at a sense of of believable mechanics something that's kind of grounded in, in the game that we want to present this idea and um the fair amount of other stuff i've been jamming since 2001 but this project was just above and beyond algerian seemed to fit better in more power hungry system and i've tried to trim the fat but by the time i get them back to something that resembles it resembles even a tiefling they just end up looking like a lifeless soulless version of what i have envisioned for sure i mean if at the very least if we're trying to squeeze it into a D, &D system that's that's my two cents that's the perspective i was taking on this um if it's to be a, a D, D 5e race then um i think it definitely needs to be trimmed up a bit and kind of squeezed into the hole but by no means i i uh, i don't i don't want to impress on you you know that you have to get rid of these things the great thing about advice is you can take it or leave it um so maybe there is a better system maybe there is, i don't know it um but maybe there is a better system that kind of uh emulates what you want more maybe this sits better in like a werewolf 5e universe i know the werewolf stat sheet block is pretty intricate and honestly werewolf and vampire they tend to merge the race uh and the class together a bit um so possibly that could be what it is i think if that was the case you'd have to make a a very strong and stout powerful race and then have like 
um, different clans that this race might play in that might emulate different other powers. So in Vampire, there's a, it's normally split into like three. You you be one, you can be a clan and then go three ways in that clan. Um, Werewolf was fairly similar in that regard. Werewolf 5e, Vampire, the Masquerade 5e, that's what I'm referring to. So yeah, so I, you know, maybe there is an, a, a different system that kind of uh, lets you get a little bit more expansive with what the race is supposed to be. Nice, and the same in the thread. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you've kept, if you keep redoing it and redoing it and you can't live with the decisions, then I think finding a new system is, you know, probably was what you're looking for at this point. I don't think you need advice. It's not what you want. <laughs> what you want is is for your for a, to have a system that that allows for or almost invites you to have a, a very rich and and full racial sh character sheet. A whisper. I didn't see any whispers. Um. All right. I've been chatting. I gotta get back to work. Cartographer's got to get back to cartographing. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's honestly, it's like... It's just what we do, and I, I had I make this joke to uh, Lore Master all the time. I was like, I just decided to turn the camera on one day. You know, it's like we've been talking about people's homebrews and helping people figure out what they want to do and what works and what fits, and just you know, it's what we like to do, and it's kind of like it's almost like you put pay it forward, right? Um, if you build it, they will come. You know, like because sometimes I'm you. Sometimes it's my idea that I don't know. <laughs> You know, like a lot of stuff with Daggerford, I, I reach out to my community and ask for help because I, I don't always, I'm not always super confident in my idea or I'm not always super confident um, in, a, in a direction that I want to maybe take, like a, a daring direction. Um, several game features that I'm going planning on integrating have come through conversations on Lore Master and, you know, my streams here. Um, how I plan to use inspiration, um, uh, you know, like safe, safe uh, gameplay mechanics, like stars and wishes, and um, and session zero type stuff, like all that stuff. You know, we we learn as we go. So yeah, if if there's that much behind it. I, see, I, I definitely did not respect or what I wasn't privy to, you know, how much has been put behind the, the concept of Algerians. <laughs> and I'm very much in camp, go find a different system. d and is not the one for you. This, like, it's like, there, this is almost like you should just maybe be an alternate race of, like I said, like where a werewolf game or a, um, I don't, but I feel like you, you have a bit more fantasy integrated into your your concept of this character so i don't know if you like this character in the the realm of high fantasy um and magic you know which is the realm of D D, and maybe you just need a different mechanical system so i wouldn't know what system that would be that is still fantasy um but i do know that like werewolf and vampire i think i'll already are kind of a bit more in, in, in the direction that you, you probably wanted to go in. And do a DBZ. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's viable. I I definitely haven't looked into anything like that.
Get you all up here. Fern Gully, Fern Fern, Fern it up. It's grass in time. Okay. Logs. And it's almost it's it's almost it's like nice, you know, it's like the palette is it's like a to-do list. Almost, you know. Like I'm gonna look at it and be like, oh I gotta do some of you, I gotta make sure I get some of you. So that way I rem I know exactly what I wanna do every time almost. Some branches. Branch! I love Trolls. It's one of, one of our favorite movies. Fuck yeah! And that's how you swamp. In case any any of you was wondering how you swamp, that's how you swamp. Jezebel, I see you. I'm just gonna finish what I'm doing, okay? Come on in here. Get in here. Da do da do dum da do da.
It is starting to come together. Thank you for all your good praises, everybody. I appreciate it. Oh, come on now. I just wanted to save my progress. That's all. Yeah, every now and then I just like... I just gotta do something a little special. You saw I put that little like little rock cropping with some mushrooms around it. Just cuz. Just cuz. one of those formats where like you're like the details you do in here can be a little fudgy and like little like oh my god I don't know how I feel about them you know like this placement or that placement but like here it all looks really good all of a sudden you know it's one of those things where you're like if you if your lines aren't straight you know it doesn't matter you're making an emoji this is gonna be freaking squished down to here you know like it's the same similar concept so I feel like I'm fairly safe in that regard. And also, I mean, I'm just like on this trace overlay. So the map isn't even me. It's more or less the design and the frameworks. But I think for me, like it gets really important for like, um, where was it? Here, here, right here. So like this gets really interesting, this little river delta here. And how it how it paint plays out, but I think I did a really good job of color it colorizing it, so it looks like this is like a rocky outface that's been cut through the the mountain, and there's some rocks here and here that have like gathered some sediment. So, um, I believe I think it was I forget it was someone yesterday that was giving me that tip, um, and it's just you know having that ability to come in here and try to make things look a bit more uh, natural in that regard. I've definitely been making an effort, you know, so. Okay, now the fun part. We're going to get into this rocky area. Get into this crater. <laughs> um. then we got uh what one two three four five six six more tiles or sections that i need to map out um i'm gonna do something along the edge of the the iceberg here let's see if i can't get a bit more information on the ice um and yeah and then i'll do like maybe an hour or two of just general uh you know touch up like just scouring the map as tile by tile send it to my uh send it to my client and see what they think and wait for any feedback as far as like um edits or changes i don't think i need too many because i've been you know just playing inside the lines So apart from just the size of this build, at the very least, I, I know the the direction of the build is going to be spot on. What's up, Duncan? Um, I'm not not. Oh no, Star Wars. I thought you were Star Trek. Yeah, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Huge, huge Star Wars fan. When I went to um, Disney with the family uh, last year, I made a point to wear a Star Wars shirt all seven days I was at uh, Disney because um, I could. And those were considered Disney shirts now. I was like, look at you, Disney. You're taking on my favorite franchise. Now I can just wear Star Wars shirts whenever I'm there. <laughs> uh, would a Star Wars evil D&D &D campaign maybe interest me? Would you be interested... 
to be an associate dungeon master um it sounds intriguing uh i have tried to do si uh, uh, side code dming in the past with war master um however my schedule is very busy right now so i don't know if i could take on another project at this point in my life um but yeah i think the idea the concept especially if it was like a so I guess in a, a, an evil campaign with like a Sith idea might work depending on how big your party is, right? Um, and then Jedi is kind of just like open format almost. You could do whatever you wanted and you'd be safe. Um, there's so many Jedi. Well, depending on when, when and where in lore, there's so many Jedi. Maybe there's not so many Jedi anymore. <laughs> Yeah, sounds. I mean, you're gonna be streaming it or posting it anywhere. I definitely can help you um, get the word out. Uh, if you're looking for more more players or maybe someone else that's interested in in, in taking on the the co DM role for you, um, you can yeah definitely give me some more information. I can post some stuff for you and see if anybody else out, is out there with some spare time. But right now, I think I am inundated for projects. No, I believe yeah, I cannot. Oh, nice. I mean, yeah, Jambit, the idea sounds wicked fun. What system would you be using? D&D? &D, or is there, like, a, is there a Star Wars system? Star Wars Edge of the Empire in its supplements. Q, Q, Q. So I would definitely very much be in the camp of, like, I would think Star Wars and its abilities and things that we like about Star Wars are very much outside of the capacity or the ability of the 5e engine or system. Like, you would, you would need a different system to do Star Wars stuff. It would be really hard. It'd be a similar problem to what you're running into, Jambit, where it's like your idea isn't bad, just where you're trying to do that idea isn't necessarily working, right? Um, force powers, uh, uh, lightsabers, uh, space travel, um, there's technologies that exist, like Bacta tanks and stuff like that, technology that just exists. Like, how would you, you know, how would you approach that as a dungeon master? And it's not to say you couldn't find a way to merge 5e and your ideas for Star Wars, but it would just be a lot of work. You'd probably be better off with an act with a system. <laughs> yeah, like when D&D &D tried psionics and failed. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so you'd just be better off with a different system in that, in that regard. Something that, like, wants to take on the Star Wars universe and balance accordingly. Not not a system that's balanced for something else and then is trying to, you know, fit into a different mold, if you will. This is honestly some of my favorite times to do this map. It's so peaceful. Just cutting my little shapes out. Which one do I want to focus on? Actually, I'll focus on this one. And that's good enough for me. Because this one I can come back out like that. And if I smoothie... It should be good. boom, 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 boom. 25 it. Uh, 25 it to there ish. 
Room height it. To here ish. A little bit. There we are. And you always bring the smooth way down. Way, way down. And I found that if you take the flat brush and you turn the intensity down it actually it works inside out so you see how I kind of created like a, a concaved path in, in, in some type of regard here um, very interesting way to use the tool are accentuate that peak a little bit um flatten the room height you see how it works from the inside out like that and i can try and create that's at 50. it's already there and that's gonna start growing it you know so it's like same concept like up and down oh oh Okay, mountain, mountain, mountain. Wait on that mountain because it's it's cut off. Mountain, ooh, mountain that comes up through the ice. <laughs> Black and terrain. It's always good to come and look at these hills from like peripheral. Fifty, fifty. Whoa! That was a little high, and this one's not high enough. See that? It's why it's, it's always good to come in here and look at this. Got to change that perspective, low. You notice? That's perfect. With some coloration, it's perfect. I believe this is a crater, crag. We finally get to go down. This is what I've been saving. Saving and waiting for. Is the ability to cut this this cave down. This crag, if you will. 
and I'm gonna have to get a little f Ooh, I'm gonna have to get a little fancy with it too because I'm gonna have to like design this so that the whole thing's one crag so I don't want to have like I don't want to have a canyon and then a crag at the bottom of the canyon I want to kind of get the rocks all in there nice Okay. I believe this is mountain and like rockiness, rocky terrain that kind of builds up to this. I'm gonna have to go double check with with the DM. Like, this stuff just is, like, so easy and just relaxing to do that, like, it's hard to feel like my brain is, like, you know, shutting down during this. Like, it feels very comfortable and cozy. It's like, yeah, I could sit here and just click do this stuff forever. It's like the trees and all that. That stuff, like, is, like, work. I'm like, ugh. Like, dang, I gotta click all these trees. Here I go. Here I go a clicking. Oh, I should cover this mountain with rocks. The snowy rocks. Like, this should just be the top of the mountain. It almost fits perfectly. Excuse me.
Wow, gorgeous. Some snow on the mountain too. No, come back. There it is. It's the peak of the mountain. And maybe... No. There we go. Um, what else can I do here for funsies? I guess just get my water cut. And we'll be packing up here pretty soon. Time is at 120. play some 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 uh the last jedi tonight with the kiddo he loves playing jedis with me
It looks like there's something there. put an extra half hour on the stream just because I, I got chatting a bit and really didn't wasn't doing too much work there but that's okay just trying to be an honest guy when I can be cool we got that tile started topography wise um, we can chop the next one and get to work on it Oh, actually, I will chop, and we'll save after we chop. Is the brown arrow another river? Um, this right here? At the top of the screen where I'm mousing? Uh, that is actually a bridge, which you, it looks like an arrow right now for sure, um, but is actually a bridge, and the line underneath it denotes a crag or a ravine, where the uh, the earth has like a. I think that actually I believe that's a lava crack, a crack of lava. So let's see, we're gonna come in here when we finally get to take this bad boy. I'm going to be like, oh no, that's going to fill that in, hey? So we might have to do some tricks. As I need to do like a line of lava like this, because I think that'll look cooler. For now, it's a river of lava. Perhaps I could do the river lava and then like maybe like try to rock in. The line. Like something like this. That looks a little clunky, but I think I can maybe I could I could spruce it up. And this is all due in part to these triangle rocks. It looks like it's like coming out of a mountain almost. And that's not that's not too bad. It's not what I had originally intended, but it's also not too bad. save <laughs> um. uh, da da dum da da dum 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 I just want to drop the uh drop the layer so I can look at the look at my work before I get off I mean, just looking at this, this looks already kind of looks kind of good. Maybe I will run with that. Snow Mountain looking 
pretty decent over there. This is going to be an entire pile of rocks, I believe. So, we're getting there, we're getting there. Save it again, just so I know it's saved. Sometimes I get nervous that it doesn't save. All right, well, thanks for sticking around, Jambit. Always appreciate it. Um, I normally don't stream on the weekends, um, so unless something comes up, I have some free time, and I got some content that I want to get out there. Um, but until then, we'll see you Sunday eve. Nope, we're skipping this Sunday. This weekend, no D&D &D Sunday. So um, we'll see y'all probably Tuesday. I think Monday's going to be a busy day. I think it's a holiday or something. So, um, goodbye everybody. Take care. Thanks for stopping by.